Oxyrhynchus was a known Greco-Roman town. It was a regional capital, pretty big place. Oxyrhynchus had the largest uh, number of churches in e e Egypt, more churches than any other city. The fund dispatched two young archaeologists to Oxyrhynchus, Bernard Grenfell and Arthur Hunt, to search for Christian manuscripts. Dr. Dirk Obink is an expert on the expedition. They were the uh, perfect collaborators. Hunt was silent and studious. Grenfell was uh, 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 fiery and gregarious. But they always worked in, in concert. And they discovered the principle that two pair of eyes are better than one. Grenfell and Hunt hired a hundred men and started to dig. More than a century later, archaeologists are still excavating the site, using the same methods as in the 19th century. We've got all kinds of new toys and gadgets in archaeology, and there's even people who can find sites from space using satellites. But ultimately, you're going to have to move the dirt, and it comes down to shovels and buckets. I'm told that this is the back dirt pile, the rubble that was left behind by Petrie's excavations in the 1890s. It covers a recently detected Greek building and has to be removed. It's a pretty neat feeling to be digging through Petrie's old back dirt pile. For an archaeologist, it's pretty cool. At first, Grenfell and Hunt failed to find anything of interest until they tried their luck in an oddly uneven stretch of desert nearby. So they went out to where the rubbish mounds were, some of them 30 feet tall, like these over here. Yeah. Not sand dunes, they're actually layers of ancient rubbish. You can see the horizontal layering yeah. in them of what's called sebok, which is the Arabic name for ancient garbage. Grenfell and Hunt ordered their workers to start digging. Within minutes, piles of papyri appeared out of the ground. The papyri came in torrents, that's how they describe it, torrents of papyri streaming from the mounds. They employed teams of up to 50 local workers, used them as diggers to clear the mounds, move them 50 feet to one side, and in the process sift out all of the papyrus fragments. The Oxyrhynchus dig would unearth treasures for years to come, one of the most revealing rubbish dumps in the history of archaeology. All the other materials that were thrown away were in with them. People's clothes, wood implements, shoes, tools. They found a Ptolemaic plow, a shield, weapons, and of course, 800 years of pottery fragment charting the chronology of the whole site. Hunt stayed up all night working on them in his tent, and he wrote that during the first season they found so many during the day that he couldn't sort them all out and catalog them at night. They just had to start packing them up in boxes with sand and debris still clinging to them. The dig at Oxyrhynchus revealed well over 50,000 Greek manuscripts, many torn into fragments. They included tax records, ancient plays, and religious texts. They sifted through this, moved it aside, and picked out only the papyrus fragments, filled them up in tin, tin boxes, and shipped them by the hundreds back to Oxford to work on. The most important papyrus was found at the start of the dig, a sensational biblical manuscript. It contained sayings attributed to Jesus. Jesus said, I stood in the midst of the world, and I found all men drunken, and my soul grieveth over the sons of men, because they are blind in their heart. It was a dream for any archaeologist, Greek papyri fragments with the sayings of Jesus. Some of the sayings were familiar to readers of the Bible at the time, but four other sayings weren't included in the Bible and had never been seen before until that day. The text was dated to the late second century. The new sayings of Jesus proved to be a sensation in Britain. As one writer commented, 
the possibility of recovering forgotten sayings of Christ strike the imaginations of even the man in the street. Of all the bass material found at Oxyrhynchus, this fragment would be designated as papyrus number one. The British press were ecstatic. Here we have, in the brief space of a few lines, a record of Jesus Christ which takes us closer to his life than any manuscript at present in existence. But the discovery also worried many defenders of the Bible text. How would these new sayings of Jesus, not included in the Bible, affect the faithful? These texts weren't in the canonical Gospels, so what was their status? Did this even mean that the Gospels themselves didn't transmit the whole of Jesus' teaching? So once again, this was risky territory for Bible-believing Christians. The whole religious world has been agitated by the publication of the reputed sayings of our Lord. 